Welcome back, everybody. I am R.L. Melpika, the Eat Coach, Natural Health and Diet Specialist. And uh, today I'm going to break down some tips on how to help your kids make some healthier choices when it comes to food. Let's get into this because, look, this is definitely a challenge. Uh, I have children of my own. I know how it can be, especially with the way of the world. I deal with it all the time with my seven-year-old daughter who plays soccer and they bring snacks and, you know, when she's hanging with her friends and they have different diets and all that stuff. So we're going to talk about all that. But first, the first thing I, I want to project to all of you parents out there is you got to practice what you preach, right? So if you want your kids to eat healthier, you have to eat healthier. And um, because they look up to you, you're their world. You are the foundation of their environment. They learn from you. Even when you don't think they're watching, you don't think they're, you know, absorbing what you're putting off, they are. And they see what you eat. They see how you act, all these different things. So make sure that you are practicing what you preach. Uh, If you If you have certain days of the week that they can have certain kind of foods, then you better have those kind of foods on those days as well, right? You know, you can't tell your kids to, you know, eat a salad and you're eating French fries and and a burger. So you can't tell your kids not to drink soda if you're drinking soda, things of that nature. Practice what you preach. You are their biggest influence. And believe me, it is powerful because when you reverse it and you start eating better, you start eating the colors of the rainbow, eating fruits, they are going to want to eat those same foods because look, they look up to, you know, you're their idol. They want to be like you. And, um, you know, that is to me the most important step in all of this. Because they are a product of us, right? If uh, the the outside world didn't exist, they wouldn't know much about it besides what they see on TV. So if you build that foundation at home to where you are practicing what you preach and and, and educating them on why these are the foods, these are the, um, the, the optimal foods for human consumption, they will understand that and they will learn that and they will grow up with that and they will instill that value in themselves. That has worked wonders for me and my seven-year-old. Um, she has never tried a piece of meat in her entire life. Um, and she knows that the basis of her diet is fruits. Now getting her to do salads and leafy greens has been difficult, but I'll get to that in my third step. Uh, number two, you know, you you have to create an inviting, healthy environment, meaning when your child or your children walk into the kitchen, what do they see? Do they see potato chips? Do they see cereal? Do they see oatmeal? Do they see chocolate and candy? Or do they see fresh fruits and 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 vegetables, right? So you you have to build your kingdom, you know, for them to follow. Like if you go into my kitchen, you know, you're going to see all the colors. You're going to see my bananas, my oranges, my right now a big thing in is uh, apple pears. Um, what else do we have? We have watermelon. We got uh, strawberries, blueberries, you know, you name it. You know, we got all those choices. So when my daughter gets hungry, she has choices. She has five or six choices of what she wants to eat. It's right there. It's that, it's that visualization. But I know that if we have chips out there, if we have cookies, we have things of that nature, that's where she's going to want to go. Right. There's there's a reason these foods are addicting. They had the chemical composition to create that neurotransmitted um, addiction to them, right? So, you know, you have to make sure that you're projecting and showcasing more of the good foods than the bad. I'm not saying you got to become a fruitarian overnight. It's not. Look, this is all about steps. It's all about understanding how the journey works. And, you know, it's baby steps, right? Just make sure that you are showing your kids and giving them more of the healthy options versus the unhealthy options. To me, that works wonders because I know like when my daughter, my daughter wakes up, she's hungry. And the first thing she usually asks for is blueberries. And she knows that's the thing. We'll get her some blueberries and she will body some blueberries. Um, But like I said, on our kitchen counters and in our refrigerator, all you see is fruits or, or lettuce 
um, and and then the things that we we want her to to want to eat. Now there are we do have some snacks and other things in our pantry, but it's covered. It's not always visual visual for her, and so it's kind of in the back of her mind. Doesn't mean she doesn't ask for them once in a while, but like the first impression, the first thing she sees is colors. She understands that her regular diet is fruits. And then everything else is like a bonus, right? Which gets me to number three. You have to get creative. You have to get creative and, and make some modifications. The reason I say that is because you're not just working against other kids in the neighborhood or other kids at school. You're working against society. Everything that, you know, when your kids are watching TV, they're streaming Netflix or Hulu or whatever the case may be, and stream and, and, and ads come on and they're showing, you know, Fruity Pebbles or this type of fruit roll up or this type of gummy, all these different um, processed foods. And then they go to school and then their friends are eating this at lunch. They're having pizza. They're having French fries. They're having hamburgers, all those different things. Right. And then, you know, on top of that, you know, they're on in sports leagues and then they're getting you know, all these different snacks. It's just the world is set up to work against you from a health standpoint. You have to get creative and you have to make modifications. Um, getting creative, <clears throat> to me, the, the one thing that we have done is that we do allow her <clears throat> to have snacks once in a while. Not all the time, um, but once in a while. Usually maybe one a day, you know, and, and I, I say snack, we, I call it a non-fruit. Not that that's what her diet is going to be, you know, moving forward when she turns 18, you know, who knows what value, you know, where she's going to be. But I'm instilling these values in her. Um, the main thing is that, like, I'm not going to completely deprive her of everything. I want her to learn. I want her to understand. And I want her to look at the diet that we have, that we've instilled as the basis, as what her foundation is. And that there is other stuff out there and it's not good for you. But in moderation, you know, you should be able to clean, you know, take care of yourself. Is it optimal? No. But once again, you're working against the world here. And we're talking about kids. <clears throat> so you have to do everything you can to to make it work. So that is one thing we do. Another thing is I'm trying to implement more leafy greens into my <clears throat> into my daughter's um Excuse me, everybody. Need some H2O <clears throat> into my daughter's um, diet, but she doesn't like the taste of leafy greens. So, you know, we've let her have a little bit of ketchup with it. Now, I know ketchup is not healthy <clears throat> by any means, but it's getting her used to the texture, the taste of lettuce. So as she grows older, then she can ditch the ketchup implement more salads into her diet and that's going to help balance her out as well so that is just a creative thing that we've done um you know or you know she looks at non-fruits almost like the average person looks at a dessert i don't have it all the time but i i can get it once in a while you know depending on how i've been eating and when i do have it it's even that more exciting so that's one of the creative ways we have implemented a um, more um, implemented a, a more, I shouldn't say tactical, but balanced approach when it comes to helping our kids eat healthier. And it isn't perfect all the time. You know, birthday parties come and all these things happen. And sometimes we have worse days than others. But she knows that if she has a bad day, just like uh, us adults know if we have bad days, that the next couple of days are going to be, you know, pretty much fruitarian, 100% to help clean ourselves out. So I hope these tips helped. Uh, I'd love to hear any strategies you guys have. Um, oh, last thing I didn't mention is to get creative. Um, you know, not everything has to be just a straight fruit or a straight salad or, you know, whatever, you know, that baseline. Like you can get creative with, you know, we bought a dehydrator. I know eating dehydrated foods all the time is not good, but once in a while it changes it up a little bit, adds different textures, different aspects to it. And, um, you know, tastes good, right? So we got some dehydrating recipes with utilizing raw fruits and veggies and things of that nature to make it, you know, more exciting for the kids. Another thing, obviously smoothies. Uh, not to have all the time, but once in a while have, have a smoothie. Uh, that makes it fun sometimes. It gives the cold element, you know, nice cream with bananas, things like that. 
uh, you can get creative. There's a lot of lot of different recipes. Reach out to me. I have a, a couple books that are that are great for that type of stuff. Uh, if you're looking to implement that into your kids' um, diet as well. But yeah, get creative, modify, um, you know, practice what you preach and make sure your environment is conducive to a healthy lifestyle. Those are the four things. Like I said, one more time. All right. Practice what you preach. Right. If you're drinking soda, they're going to want to drink soda. If you're eating chips, they're going to want to eat chips. But if you're eating fruits and you're eating salads and things of that nature, that's what they're going to want. That's what they're going to identify as food, optimal food for the human species. Right. Number two, make sure that environment is on point. Make sure you are showcasing the foods that you want them to eat. They are going to fixate off of what they see. They are a product of their environment. Show them the colors of the rainbow. And that's what they're going to want to eat when they're hungry. And number three, you know, sometimes you got to get creative, make some modification, things of that nature. So uh, things don't get stale. Things don't get boring. And uh, you can kind of ease them into a, um, a healthier lifestyle. So. Like I said, give me a thumbs up if this resonates. Drop any comments, any strategies, any questions, things of that nature. But I do appreciate all of the uh, love that you guys have have shown me on my channel. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Peace, love, and light. I'm out, everybody.